All right, everybody, and welcome to a very special GSA event. A little over a year ago, we started out with a 120 star relay tournament. And here, just before the dawn of season two, we're coming right back to kick it off with a brand new 120 star relay here. And it's going to be some of the very best players in the world. I'm here with Scotch and Taika to bring you the action live. First of all, how are you doing? And what do you think about this insane race you got going on today? Oh, man, I'm doing great. This is awesome. You know, just to get back into a little bit of SM64, obviously, two leagues about to start up the 70 star of the D Division 1 and Division 2. But, you know, just to bring everything back into perspective, this 120 race, Liam Kings and Cheese on one side, Punke and Para on the other, uh, should be an epic race. Yeah, and we're actually going to do it a little bit differently than in the past since it's a pretty long run, you know, 120 star. About an hour and 40 minutes if you're really good like these guys are. It's going to be split into quarters. So we're going to have Punke and Liam face off in lobby. Cheese and Para do kind of basement through, <clears throat> through kind of CCM, which is like right before DDD. And then we're going to do... Back to, <laughs> I know that maybe I shouldn't have said this, but like Mario. back to Cheese and, no, back to Punky and Liam for CCM through Tiny Huge Island and then switching again for THI to the end. So we're just going to have like a few different switches. So each runner is going to do two segments instead of just one. So that's how this one's going to work. It's going to be a little bit different. And also that means they're each going to have two chances to try to beat the other player that they're head to head against. So this is going to be a pretty sick race. And a lot has happened recently. We have a world record. The 139 milestone has been broken by the one and only Cheese yesterday, about 24 hours ago with a 138.51, a brand new SM64 world record and a new minute barrier breached. Three days ago, Paracusa clocking in with a 140.08. He's been on the cusp of 139 for a long time and definitely a world record contender in the near future. Liam Kings a couple weeks ago, Dropped his first 139 with a 139 57 or actually 56 retimed. And Punk A has been on the grind recently doing world record attempts and been really close to it. His PB is still a 139 36 and it's almost two years old. So all these players are in tip top form right now. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't have asked for four better players to just come together uh, for this sort of thing. And it looks like we're about to get the countdown and getting ready to go here uh before we get started make sure uh if you haven't already if, if you have the money please subscribe uh we had a couple of subscriptions up and down uh that, that we've seen just before the race started and then of course those uh commands exclamation point schedule let's see the full schedule of everything that we have to offer here at gsa it is a full schedule of just so many races celeste sm64 or with a you know, just a little bit of everything. Uh, exclamation point uh, YouTube or exclamation point YT for the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to that. All of the reruns are on there. Some clips. If you've missed any races or if you just want to rewatch something, check that out. And of course, we've got the merchandise exclamation point merch in chat. So we have Liam Kings and Punky facing off in the first segment. And Liam has been doing pretty much like eight plus hour streams almost every day. So when he gets out of lobby, it's a really good pace. But in this kind of setting where you can't just reset over one mistake, he's going to have to deal with some mental stress that's not the same as what you do in the normal run because it's more of just the wear and tear of grinding for a good run. But this is just pushing past the mistake and having to continue. So we're going to see if that is something he can overcome today. And Punk A has been pretty cool in races. Definitely a consistency monster in the first season of the 70 Star League. So I've got high hopes for him. Liam's gonna definitely give Punk a run for his money though. Looking a little shady or sloppy here, missing the bomb. He can recover this with a nice grab and he does. So Punk a getting a nice two second lead. Liam King's right behind him though. Not gonna give him too much breathing room. Yeah, a couple early mistakes there from Liam, but nothing too, too crazy to talk about here. You know, uh, just getting the jitters out, getting that the beginning of the race started. Uh, gonna be heading into Womps now. Yep, we're, yeah, we're not doing LBLJ this run. We're going to keep it starting off with Bomb Clip so that way we don't have any like weird meltdowns at the very beginning of the race. And we're going to probably see some 
Expert Cycle 100 coin from Liam Kings. We'll see if Pumpkin wants to go for it or not. He's going for the safe tree route. So Liam Kings actually looking like he's going to go for Cannonless. Owlis? Okay. <laughs> so Liam Kings got that one and Pumpkin's hit the blue switch. This cycle is pretty lenient and he really likes to do it in races. You can go pretty slowly on this triple or like double jump kick, double jump dive. And Liam's back in here. Punk hey, coming around the Prana Plant. Pretty good job to get that blue coin and still avoid the wall. You don't want to bonk that you can fall down and lose a lot of time. Yeah, this cycle on Punk K's side, just absolutely epic. Liam getting that first try Cannonless. So first try Alice and first try Cannonless, you know. Uh, two pretty standard, uh, pretty standard tricks done here at Womps, but you know, it, messing up on either one of those uh, can kind of be a little bit jarring. So Liam getting past that pretty nice. And we see him working on that pro cycle for a hundred coins now. Yeah, he's there. there. Yeah, Liam King's a lot tougher to make this cycle. We'll see if he can make it. Oh, he's definitely on pace for it. You just don't want to have any big mistakes early on. Losing a bit of speed here. All right, he's still on. Pretty good. Okay, missed one coin. That is fine. You can miss two. Pumpkin going up for Alice here. And Liam King's also getting pretty bad blue coin RNG, opting to just stay on the ground and collect it. Pumpkin had to go for a riskier jump collection. And Liam King's still going to take that 100 coins, so probably going to save a couple seconds here on Pumpkin. But we saw him, he's already got Alice done. So well, by the time he gets his fifth star, they'll be properly synced again. Well, Punke missing that Alice first try. Uh, gonna be a little bit frustrated with that. Liam might be able to make a, a little bit of time off that. Yeah, you're right. I I just completely missed it then. <laughs> but now working on cannonless here, setting up. Texture looks good, but and he gets it. All right. So Team Congo back in the lead. I don't know how they came up with that name. Yeah, both these team names are pretty interesting. The Wild Blue, pretty much free. And as a reminder to everyone in chat, uh, Liam and Cheese uh, are on Team Congo. Punky and Para are Team Cyclops there. Uh, Liam hitting up towards that big womp with the lead. Yeah, we're going to see here if Liam Kings can keep that lead going out of Wombs. I would guess he does, but there can always be some weird hurdles to overcome on these last two stars. Both these guys using that side method for Big Womp. You know, it, that side method of getting off of him can be kind of tricky just simply because of the hitbox that Big Womp has, you know, you can kind of slide down in an area that you wouldn't expect to, but both guys are avoiding that pretty nicely. All we gotta do is take care of top of that fortress. Uh, you know, just quick little movements. Yeah, not too, too much. crazy. Yeah, Liam King's looking to get, you know, 550 something. And Punk A maybe like seven seconds behind. 51, pretty good. You know, in terms of... Oh, what? Punk K did not get that triple jump dive using another, like, five seconds or so there. All right, heading into Jeremy. Now, this is going to be pretty interesting because they both go for the frame walk, and this isn't something we really had people do in 120, so we always just did the cannon shot until, like, Siglemic did it at pace, and then some people were debating, like, hey, is this, like good for runs and then we decided that yeah you can just get a different controller for it and that's what people do so it's a pretty new evolution in the run okay so <laughs> for the relay it's gonna be liam kings and punke they're gonna play until they finish bob on battlefield where they're gonna have 26 stars out of the 120 and then when that happens on the save screen, the other player is going to take over. You'll see the timers change below their names because it's going to flip to the other stream. And they have a file already created to continue from that point. They're going to go until about halfway through the run before you go back downstairs to do Dire Dire Dots and Piracy. And then they're going to switch again in Tiny Huge Island. So that way the fourth 
segment, they'll still have like the second runner. They'll both do two segments each to finish out the run. Our so, restreamer yeah, to take over when our restreamer Milo, our restreamer Milo getting his work in. Obviously, having to flip between those screens, but into JRB now a little bit slower section just because of all this water. Uh, gonna be seeing a lot of camera movement to avoid that lag. Uh, Liam heading straight into that ship. Gonna be clipping into this. Yeah, fun time to flip. Nice. This is actually a fairly difficult star, even though it's a pretty slow moving one. Swimming around these chests optimally is pretty difficult. And then just getting the sh ship clip as well. There's like a bit of an instant clip you can do, but that's, you know, nowhere near guaranteed. It's just kind of on a happy accident if it happens. And missing ground pound, I got to pause a couple seconds too. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, Punk hey, looked like he had a pretty. You were talking about that insta clip. It looked like he almost got that, just about. Uh, not getting the ground pound either. Gonna have to re ground pound for the box. Pretty surprising. Uh, they would both miss the ground pound. All right, Liam Kings. Let's see what he's got. He is going for that pillar. All right, frame walk engaged. Look at that. And okay, oh, going right nailed. for that jump. Nice job from Liam. <laughs> Some call it cheats. I don't know if it is or not. I think that's something we still have to decide as a community, but that's pretty sick, both of them getting it. I mean, it's not a technical feat if you have the cheat controller, so <laughs> it's kind of, that's the, the debate more like, because you can't really do it on analog stick. Jaws did it on Hori, but that was like, you know, not very easily replicable. Working on 100 on Liam's side. Punke going to be heading for this jet stream star. Got to be moving at full pace. You know, you got to be making sure that you're hitting that A button correctly so that you can make those swim animations in the right pattern so that you can keep up that speed and then you have to have that angle just right. It's a pretty free angle, generally speaking, but uh, if, you're, if you go just a little too far left or right, you're going to get pushed out. Yeah, that's one case where like proper swimming is actually noticeable, but throughout the course of the stage, you're going to see just a lot of swimming. And since we don't really have the audio for both, you won't be able to hear it, but the kind of whoosh whoosh sound is kind of like how you would want to be swimming when you're doing it properly. There's also just a lot of taking good angles and lag reductions that Liam is doing here through these clams. And Punky getting that second clam is actually one of the most difficult ones. So it's definitely a lot more in depth than it looks. I guess that might be a swimming pun, but no, it's really just a lot of practice involved. Really nice wall kick there on Liam's side. It's the triple jump. And take yep, care of 100 idea. and red coins at the same time. Okay, kind of going for this. You just spam B to go up this wall since it's like a steep slope, but underwater, just the the way the games the game works just allows you to kind of ascend it. All right, Liam. I think he's got a few more stars left. Well, he definitely has three left. He's got Jetstream, the Eel, and the Treasure in the Ocean Cave. Pretty easy stars. I wouldn't expect any big mistakes here. 100 point is definitely the, the most difficult. And then followed by the sunken ship, which is the first star. So it's just a lot of like little things that you might be able to save seconds on, but not too much time. Oh, Punke, a couple of more mistakes trying to move on this rocking ship. Not able to get that optimal movement. Gets a ledge grab, and because of the way that the... Uh, that the ship moves, he gets knocked off of that ledge. Uh, so a couple extra seconds there given to Liam pretty freely. Yeah, it kind of sucks for Punk A, but he's only made minor mistakes so far. We've yet to see any real big difference between them. So Liam's just gotten a lead through a little bit better execution and Punk A making like maybe three minor mistakes that Liam hasn't. 
So this is really good pace for Liam. Punky missing the clip though, that's actually pretty bad because it doesn't save very much time. But if you miss it, you do lose a substantial amount. You gotta go all the way over for the eel now. Alright, swing down into that star, it's fine. But another dub for Team Congo. Liam heading over for that exact clip. Gets it! Nice. That's only a small time save. It's like a second or not even. Even though it looks like a very impressive skip. So the splits, beat up, they are BOB, which is 26 stars, kind of out of lobby. Then there's CCM 59 stars, which is kind of after basement and vanish cap. Then there's THI 88, which is about, which is like through all of piracy and then wet jar world and THI upstairs. And then it's from there to the end. All into Peach Slide. Now get those guesses out in chat. Liam. Lined up pretty well. I'm gonna guess nice 12 6 from him. 12 8. I think Punk can do 12 7. Team Cyclops definitely need something going for them. Alright. Winkack breads, you know, we talk about swimming. Let's talk about flying now. Yeah, flying is definitely a nuanced form of movement where it's really all about finesse. If you're flicking the analog stick at all, you're probably not doing it right. There's only a few times when you're going around turns that you'll even hold it like most of the way. But usually it's just kind of very slightly around the neutral zone. Holding a side angle, because like Mario, he will kind of normally bob up and down, and Plunky missing those first two reds here. So he's gonna have to like pull up a little bit and get these next two. Lose about three seconds. But like the way the flying works is like you have to hold slightly forward for Mario to not like fly up and down, just for him to go steady. So that's kind of how you'll do a lot of these like straight seconds, and also you'll kind of loop by going slightly down and slightly back up again. So it's like a lot of very fine-tuned, preci precise thumb movements. I mean, it doesn't have to be that precise, but to do it well, you definitely have to know what you're doing. One of the biggest things that new players struggle with, I would say, like, no one's immune to it. So far, 3 12 8 that we've seen so far. Liam heading into Dark World as Punke is finishing up this second Peach Slide. Oh 4 12 8 that's shameful. Just kidding. Not the best slide times, though. Dark World. You know, all these Bowser areas, all about cycles. Um, these guys have these down to a science, essentially. Uh, Liam not going for that rollout there. Keeping it safe. TG4AC, thank you so much for the sub. Sub hype in chat. You might uh, want to have your sinking mode ready in case something happens. Not to curse. Alright. Liam getting that chig cycle. And Punke going for chig as well. Definitely better for races. Zyra cycle can save over a second, but it's not worth it for the increase in difficulty. Nice double firsties from Liam. Oh, and Liam gets a dance. Saves a little bit of time there. In that Bowser fight. Yeah, good stuff. Good RNG. Punky also double firsties here. Looking like some 16 runners out here. But probably won't get the dance as well. If he did, I would probably go buy a lottery ticket. Just kidding. Never do that. Punky getting the 
lesser of the RNG. But getting that first throw. Head back into BOB though. Two very nice dark worlds otherwise on both sides of the screen. This is very solid from Linkings. I can't even think of a big mistake he's made. Like this is kind of like a normal run that he would have on a, a PB attempt. Or I think Punke, a little worse than he would like, but not even that bad. Liam's just playing very well. Yeah, he's like you said earlier, you know, he's been on that grind just playing every single day for what it's what he's, he's playing it as if it's his job at this point, you know, eight hours a day. Um, you know, putting in that time, putting in that work. He's get, getting that 139 finally. Um, you know, when, when you're doing runs over and over again, resetting, you're getting these early parts of the run um, really down to a science. So, um, obviously, Liam, you know, showing off. That practice really pays. Yeah, not too surprising. But then again, Liam has many fewer or... People like Punk have many more years under their belt than Liam King's. He's only played the game for about two years now. Meanwhile, Punk has got like six years, maybe more. I would say like seven. So it's pretty impressive. And Liam is also one of the players who really puts a lot of effort into watching their X cams. And X cam meaning like individual star times in practice. And he's really been learning to do things optimally from the beginning. Pericusia as well. They're definitely more of like. Um, speed scientists trying to get everything down as good as possible. They even had a bit of a duel over SSL Reds, which we'll see later in the run. Pair and Cheese will do that one. And this is a new um, feature in BOB. Not really a feature, but optimization where you can actually get a little bit faster uh, Koopa movement when you go farther away from the mountain like this. So the Koopa normally goes at a set speed, and then when you finish the race, he increases his speed. But if you're more than so many units out, he goes a little bit faster. So by doing this movement off the mountainside, you actually make the Koopas go like very marginally faster to the goal. But it's kind of cool to see this movement on the side of the mountain. Well, there you can see the Koopas right there. You know, you could see him as you were being shot up the mountain. Typically, he's on the other side of that mountain while you're, you're shooting yourself up there, so you don't really see him at, until he gets to the very tippy top. Yeah, Punkei going for the cannon shot here. It's not really too difficult to beat the Koopa up here when you open the cannon. That's just kind of something you've done. Although, there is a theory route where you do Koopa with 100 coin, but that's not really viable for a speed run like this. Alright, Liam doing some sky jumps, kick up the hill, go for a nice butt slide, get some speed, get some air, get some stars. Not too much to it. Although he might have stored an angle there, we have to be careful. That means when he jumps out of the cannon, he'll like veer off sideways. No, he's good. Opting for secrets first. Looks like Punkay is going to be starting to work on his 100 here in BOB. Yeah, this star is very difficult and probably the hardest thing so far in the run. Or at least one of them. You have a good bit of RNG to deal with and the flying especially to get more coins out of the air saves you a lot of time at the end with the pulls because if you have to do four pulls, it's quite a bit slower than if you can do three, even with the box. So depending on how many coins they get out of the air, they're going to be able to do different endings. So you want like 51 going into the cannon optimally. So you're going to try to fly around these two rings here if you can. Punk and getting every point, I think. No, he's down one. That's not too bad, though. Alright, Punky with the turnaround. That's the most critical part. Getting 66 is pretty decent. I would say that's at least above average, or at least average if you're a really good player. So this should be a box in three um, holes. Uh oh, Liam. Liam. Yeah, Liam falling down there, not getting a good angle for Chain Chomp, that Chain Chomp area. Um, going to be losing about, I'd say, four or five seconds there. Uh, it's Punkay, so Punkay able to make up a little bit of time as long as he's able to keep the 
end of this clean. Yeah, I'm actually gonna save some time here for the first time, like in this entire run. He's actually gonna get some good gains over Liam here. We'll see how Liam finishes this 100 coin though. Ooh, that's not a great. 55 coins. This is dire straits for Liam Kings. He got up to 61, but he still needs all four bowls. So Punke really reaping in that time save. And by the way, this is the last star for these two runners here. Cheese and Punke, or Cheese and Para will take over the basement from here. So Punke might actually be pretty close to making up with Liam's time. Oh, terrible RNG on That's Liam's terrible. side. Yeah, absolutely just horrendous RNG there. Only getting one coin from that box. These guys are getting ready to switch off. Well, I'd say it's for the better that, the mis that this mistake happened at the end of Liam's segment because then he has time to untilt before he has to play an upstairs. So, or DDD100 especially has been a killer for pretty much everyone at the top level. So you'll have some time to catch his breath, watch cheese, and you know try to come back and kill it again. 2338 is his final fade out. Cheese back on screen. And this is going to be the next segment whenever he starts going need a handoff need a practice or baton handoffs i guess team congo apparently not to practice in this regard maybe we're trying to resync uh... it oh snap we got uh... a robert oh punke or para. <laughs> I want okay. <laughs> so para for sure heading downstairs. But cheese, not sure what's going on. I wonder if his stream's frozen. Okay, on Cheese's screen, he has already gone to SSL. He has 28 stars, so I think it's on our end. Okay, we've got him now. Uh, okay. <laughs> so a little bit of confusion there. Unfortunately, not seeing uh, Cheese take care of that first... Looks like first star in SSL. Repair doing a nice job there with that plus. Yeah, I hope he didn't miss reds because I think... Cheese probably went for Pless and Topless. So we'll see Reds after this star. This is also Paracousia playing instead of Punkay now. Both doing a pretty nice job so far in SSL. She's going to be heading into the pyramid. Taking on IROC. All right. Reds for Para. Knocking the speed kick off the bat, though. Losing a little bit of time. Getting the single jump first frame there to the box. That's pretty insane. Getting a lot of fight speed, too. Para is so notorious for these optimal aggressive flight patterns where he pretty much touches the quicksand, but he doesn't care because he knows he's got it. Now, this is another frame perfect input. A Z press to slide very quickly on this slope, and he's got it, too. Lots wow. of speed for Paracusia, but not getting this double jump. So one frame off of perfection here, but he's going to still survive and drop a really nice strat. Well, I mean, those reds are just so technical. Um, you don't see them on, in 70 star, obviously, so it's tough to see. But, you know, it's it, you could just see just how that flying was on Paris' side. Just really, really nice. And we didn't miss it from Cheese, so he's going to have to go at it now. He's got a lot to live up to, but maybe a little bit of room to improve on what Para was able to show. Nice speed off the triple jump. Actually, maybe not as much as Paragot. 
So flying will lose a couple of seconds here. Pair a nice topless. He's a lock one on an SSL all the time, but you know, both these runners handling it pretty well so far. Let's see if Jeez! Oh no! no. Okay, yeah. ledge grab so close. Wow, that was a very, very close to a death. Opting That's a good to jump over the yeah. Oh, to jump over the lock head there. Getting a little spine there as well. Well that was pretty tough. She's, you know, he's lucky to be out of that one alive, but Para is hot on his tail right now. All right, 100 coin here is one of the more difficult stars in the run as well. It relies a bit on RNG here and also on the first Poke. She's up to kill that Bob Bomb, but missing the coin. Para is actually looking to take the lead right now. Get your sinks out right now. Here we go. Coming around the outside here, you have to kill quite a few pokies, but there's also some flying involved, which both Cheese and Para are very good at. They're missing that glitchy double jump onto the pillar, so now they're in sync right here, flying through the boxes. Wow. Wow, okay, look at that sink. Perfect. Now, bringing this box in the pillar requires you to, like, pull alternate directions, so you actually fall into the pillar while the box breaks. That way it won't bounce you off of the pillar in return. And that slope right there is kind of annoying, but she's doing the well. Para losing a little bit of time floundering here, but managing to get the chip jump and activate the pillar at the same time, which is really important to actually open up the pyramid top once you get up here. She's gonna get in here a little bit ahead. Oh, you can't. Okay. Oh, Para also a bit sketchy. Gotta avoid the fly guy. All right, if you die there, that's pretty catastrophic, but Perry is also going to save some time in the pyramid, potentially. Going for that glitchy ledge grab or kind of bong. Oh, oh no, no, he's missed the third secret. Yeah, he's going to have to get back up. He, he looks like he's going to attempt the backup. Not getting it first try. Looks like he's going to try for it again. That should work. Okay. There you go. She's also not getting that sick oh, no. alive. Don't grab the star, cheese. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what he did there. A little bit of spaghetti on both sides of the screen. But able to mitigate it. Fair missed one point on Sicko Dive, but it's not too bad. I'm just gonna so need to get one Goomba before clicking that 100. Cheese finishing it up. Yeah, that was a scary, scary star for both of them. Well, the big thing there was, you know, fixing the mistake, you know, uh, Para missing that third uh, secret, gonna, going back to back that up. Cheese uh, having a little difficulty there uh, with coin count, almost collecting that secret star. You know, if he had collected that, that would have been catastrophic for hundreds. Well, into I'm... HMC now. And she's right off the bat going for this 100 coins. Yeah, super difficult star here. Very technical in the maze, in the elevator area he's entering here. And even in the ending, there's a lot of time to be lost from very little things. It's very difficult and takes a lot of practice. See, that's even one of them. A lag reduction by turning the camera the opposite way would save like... Maybe half a second or so. I'm not sure how much. Oh no, she's missing the long jump. He's gonna have to get the elevator again. This is huge. Para might be back in the lead here. So you want to get on the elevator and trigger it. And then once you get back here, you'll jump on it before it stops blinking. So she's got that part down. But then this long jump, he missed. And Para with the nice movement there to get all the coins in the air. Really fluid. Whoa. Oh no! Just missing That's the really bonk. Difficult. I mean, you, you're, you're getting to see here just how difficult it is, you know, to take care of this cheese. I mean, he has the world record for HMC overall, uh, but so it's bad. not, not. It's very difficult. He got it the other day. 
I think his like gold split was really good for not having HMC BLJ, but the Sage RTA is someone else. Nice. Oh, missed the BLJ for Para though. That's, you know, pretty... I don't even know what to say, man. It's a tough thing to do, perhaps, but that was just a drop mash. And that's not really something you can really afford to do against Cheese. All right, second try. He's got it. Cheese, meanwhile, catching up and getting through on the second long jump. This is really tough and really tight right now for both these runners. We'll see if Para can keep his lead through the end of the star. There's a little bit of RNG here from this eyeball, but there's also the the necessity to run around him to activate him, and then getting this triple jump wall kick to grab the block in the air. This eliminates the need to use the elevator at all for any of these like last four coins. Okay, so not perfect RNG. She's can get the star spawned up here though. Yeah, a little bit poor RNG, but happy to get out of that, fortunately. All right, so that was a pretty crazy HMC 100, showing just how difficult a lot of these stars are. If you see the PB video, you see the world record, you know, it's hard to tell what's hard and what's not, but HMC is hard. And pair with the BLJ, can you get it? Yeah, there wow. we go. That's one Check thing that, that Cheese is not going to be doing, I don't think. He's doing talking ways normally. So there we go, pair of flexing. And that's something he was one of the first to implement and really bring it into RTA. Neither Cheese or Liam do it. Both Para and Punke do, so it is a bit of a schism between the, the two teams here. Alright, coming down to Metal Cap, the hardest remaining star in HMC for sure. So runners like to get what's called blankless, which is where you grab the star before the metal cap starts blinking. It has a pretty short timer. So if you really make any mistakes, wow, what a pillar from Paracusa running between the wall of the cage and the kind of bar on the right. She's doing the same thing with a wall kick. Easy blinkless from Paracusia. Yeah, it looks good on Cheese's side as well. Two very nice blinkless metal cap stars there. It's so crazy that after almost losing a run in HMC 100, they both just come back and hit the next star and the next two just with full steam. Para missing that double jump wall kick. Opting to back it up with Christmas Miracle. Cheese. Triple jump off the box. Nice dive as well. Yeah, Cheese appears to be in the lead, but the Christmas Miracle Star, Metalhead Mara, can move is about 10 seconds longer. So it's gonna be still in Para's favor if he doesn't make any more mistakes. Yeah, you just gotta get this turn right here get the right angle on that wall which he does you know that that can be it, it can be so tricky you know uh, getting the right angle for the wall kick while also not you know falling off into the into that hole yeah for sure All right, there's only a couple stars left in Hazy Maze Cave, and then we're through with Basement, or the two hardest stages in Basement, which are, I would say, 
definitely some of the hardest in the run. And they've had their share of mistakes, but I think both runners are coming out skated but still alive. And it's such a good race to see that they both make similar mistakes but are pretty even matched. And we're 37 minutes in. <laughs> All right, rolling rocks, pretty good. And now we're gonna talk to Toad and get on out of there. We've had enough of the dim, dark, hazy maze cave. And now we're gonna go into the fire beneath lava land. Not as hard of a stage, but you know, I think there's quite a few places where you can lose time. No lava boost in 120 star though, it's gotta be said. Yeah, that's the nice part about 120 Star Leaf of Lava Land. You know, you don't have to worry about that particular trick. Um, so most of it's pretty straightforward. And she's messing geez, up on reds. Yeah, I say it's straightforward, but she's uh, having a little difficulty here on one of the uh, simpler stars here in Leaf of Lava Land. Yeah, and Para had a fantastic wing cap. You know, you get a lot of speed on flight if you get a good speed kick, which he did. And out of a, a jump dive, it was a pretty fast star. And going for ledge grab to get bullies, that was ambitious, but it's not going to pay out because he ledge grabbed on the raft. And taking a, another jump to kill the last one. So a couple of seconds possible for Cheese to save, but Cheese is not really giving himself the best showing here in the first two stars and these are like kind of the easiest reds you know kind of precise on the jump dive but other than that it's not very difficult and para is kind of just put on a show she's is gonna have to try to get his team back in the lead both these guys working hard para on that elevator tour. Not much of an elevator tour. We're going to skip the tour completely. Yeah. Alright, so these bullies are not the hardest stars, but Para messed up the first one. Jeez. One for Ledge Cup skip bullies. Can you save the time here? Looks like he's got it. Yes, he does. And Para getting the right side ground pound on the big bully. So pretty good execution for both. Yeah, really nice triple bully kill there. You know, Para having the to, yeah, you got to be careful there with those uh, blocks heading up towards the star. You know, you can get caught underneath that, and that's an instant death just about. We have seen a couple saves there, but it's it's very difficult. Oh no, and Cheese having difficulty entering in to the volcano. Cannot take a fall here. Needs to play very carefully. It's all good. Neither of them did the quote optimal beginning movement to get to the lava. If you Mario Cam see down to the left and Bubber kick to the right, you just land in the lava like a couple frames earlier than what they did. 100 coin here for Para getting the shell. This one is kind of cool to watch. Maybe not the hardest 100 coin, but if you lose your shell, then you're in a world of hurt. And honestly, you're kind of left out to dry. You can still do it without the shell, but it's a lot harder to lose a ton of time. Well, you can see just how close behind Cheese is now. You get a really good idea of the time difference just after this star. Yeah, nicer bully for Cheese, but they're st still in the lead. Oh no, and Cheese losing Whoa. the shell. I might have jinxed it because that almost never happens at this level at least. Cheese can still get in the elevator here with 80 coins, so not bad at all. Paired with an, in, with an unintentional lava burn. That's a tough one on Cheese's side. You know, fortunately losing that shell 
late into that 100 coins. So not harming him his time too badly. Yeah, not the cleanest volcano for either of them, but pretty good, I would say. They both got a burn that they weren't... Or Para got another burn when he tried to roll all over the plane. Cheese didn't go for it, but was overall a bit cleaner for what he attempted. A Nips catch? Barely, okay. Well, it looks like about three seconds worth of difference heading out of Lethal Lava Land. Two nice little Mips grabs. Now we're getting to... Oh, Perry trying to do Mips clip here. Nice. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that actually changed the lead here. Mips clip is actually technically faster, but he didn't save any time with it, as you can definitely tell. Well, almost close to a sync up. Maybe a second or two worth of difference now. Heading into Vanish Cap. You know, Vanish Cap, this, this is one of those stages that, you know, I don't think anyone really looks forward to, um, especially with that ending with the elevators. Yeah, this is so scary. All right, he gets to clip off the edge. They both do, so they're going to make the fast cycle. Hera has grinded this star, like, excessively. He's got a really good time on it. But sometimes that can come back to bite you in the wrong way. Nope, all good for him. See if we can get the Siglemic ledge grab skip to avoid the text. She's getting it, and Para as well. Pretty so darn hot. Epic. Get your Siglemic out in chat. We'll head back into VC just to get ourselves back into the castle more quickly. Into CCM now. Okay. This is the last stage in segment number two. After this one, we're gonna get Punky and Liam back in here to duke it out on DDD 100, which is gonna be definitely a turning point in this run, no matter what happens. Well, wall kicks, oh, wall kicks. not working there for Cheese, but working out just fine for Para, switching the lead once again. All right, solid backup for Cheese, but like you said, we've had so many lead changes, and in a 120 star race, this is about as close as you could possibly hope for. A couple seconds apart, even when everything went awry in basement, they somehow managed to stay like within reach of each other. Well, I that's you know this is kind of the sort of thing that you expected from this kind of a race, uh, especially with it being a relay. These guys are just so good at these at this category. Um, and are so consistent uh so any mistake made they're able to you know the other person's able to capitalize on it uh, whereas those who, who do make the mistake you know they're able to subsidize that mistake and make it as minor as possible nice red coins on both sides of the screen cheese with the ground pound though yes yeah, so it up on this star, there's been a few optimizations coming around. They both actually had a missed ground pound. Para was before long jumping to the warp, but he re he did the two optimizations that people started doing last year where you mix up the coin order. So you actually get the one on the little wooden bridge before the warp, and then you go long jump back across the gap to get the one in the like corner behind the cliff. So that's a tiny bit faster. Then he went for the Fantax ending, which is where you do a jump dive instead of a long jump as the star spawns. She's went for a long jump and got a better ending. Paracusia tried to jump dive a little bit too early, but it can save like 0.1 if you do it well and it looks pretty cool. Because you actually land on the slope part, so you instantly roll out with one button and then you just jump dive immediately and it's pretty, pretty nice. But it's harder <laughs> and not really too relevant. We'll see if either of them go for the quote-unquote Kingu trick. It's more useful as a backup than as a go-to strat, because you have to land like very much at the edge of the cliff to get lower speed. But both of them getting in a decent penguin. Here we go. You can actually do a lag reduction if you Mario cam and spam C left before getting the star spawn. And that saves a bit of time because you look at the penguin a lot when you get the star animation. Oh, 
On to CCM 100s. Now, this one's a fun one to watch. We've seen a couple of run. Uh, we've seen Saxdale's version of this. Kind of interesting. Now, the guy going to be uh, using that to their advantage here, though. And grabbing those blue coins uh, before heading all the way down to the, uh, to the bottom of the mountain. Yeah, it's easy to ball seed triple jump dive into the chimney. One of the few options, one of the few optimizations that you can really do on this star where Paracusa did the normal jump kick jump dive into the chimney. And you missed a coin there, but cheese, when you do that triple jump dive, it's quite common you miss one, which will put you on perfect one common for on the slide. You got all of them, but it's a lot of confidence to go for, or it takes a lot of confidence to go for. You gotta have 85 finish this up both guys have 85 so we're not going to see any any major mishaps here shout in out to CCM. Lane. shout out to lane Sarity for ordering 164 he's a 120 star runner on emulator there you go shout outs to grogi all right we're still like four seconds apart Now, Here we, last star for CCM before you ready? switch off the again. the star in the run. Okay, Paracusia talking to the snowman. She's also talking to the snowman. Paracusia hitting the fence is what I'm talking about. Time going down the drain. She's probably going to win the race now. Just kidding. You can actually save a, or you can lose a bit of time by not talking to the snowman instantly. And also by not backflipping into the star. I believe Para does both of these, but Cheese doesn't. See, Para stops in front of the star, and Cheese is just stopping under it to jump normally. You see how it's a bit slower. And the second switch is on, we're back to Punke. Pop a pancake. About to knock out some, some scary ghosts. with a bong all right so ghost hunt is a pretty interesting star and it's one that punky practices a lot like usually when he starts streaming he just practices ghost hunt door skips for like half an hour or it just seems that way whenever i catch him so right here you can do uh okay he's gonna kill the boot and long jump here to get through the door while the text box is loading and that saves a bit of time here as well let you get a faster kill on the second boot liam's not gonna go for it but Punky is showing off that nice little optimization that's pretty cool. You can actually do one on the last boo as well. We'll see if he can do it there. But it's a lot harder because you have to kill both boos and long jump pretty much frame perfectly to get through the door. Alright, let's see if he got into both boos there. Can he do it? Punky nailing it, actually getting through the door, skipping the text box, and instantly getting that boo kill. That's so impressive. You don't see that very often at all. Liam King's. Not getting the door skip very close though. Yeah, kind of triggering. You get that right in the middle of that doorway, but Mario decides to walk back into the room. You know, really looking forward to this BBH 100 in particular. There's such fun movement. Really interesting, something that you don't typically see. Yeah, this outdoors part is the most difficult because you have a very limited amount of time to get through. Kill the Scuttlebug. Oh no, that's another punch. That even could be a big issue for Punk, hey, if he has to chase coins. Okay, good RNG, he really needed that. Because these blue coins in here go away. See, that one was about to disappear if he was like a split second later. And the vanish cap will fall away a few seconds later. So always very scary here. Liam not killing the booze a bit safer. And having more time on the vanish cap as well. Liam, nice job reading the boo. When he goes around the eyeball the other way, he decides to go off the near wall instead of the far one. It's a bit harder to see. 
but he's practiced both cases to be able to do it optimally no matter what RNG he gets entering the room. Pretty cool to see. Funkei not getting the cleanest, um, like, book kills. We'll see if Liam can save a bit of time here. Yeah, yeah Liam having to chase down that one blue coin. A little bit poor of RNG. Better RNG with these books, though, on Liam's side. Nice slide into a... Into a rollout ground pound. Yeah, you want to avoid what's called the factory, which is where you drop all the way down to that pit. It doesn't kill you, but it sends you to the merry-go-round all the way at the bottom of the house, which loses like 45 seconds, I think. So when you fall off that that slope, when it tilts, you can get a bong. So that's why we do a C up slide there. Yeah, BBH 100. Really fun to see. Punky heading back in. Liam close behind still. And I'm going to be taking on this carousel of booze. Really interesting way that they finish this up. Uh, you kind of get Big Boo into a corner able to grab that star almost instantaneously yeah good way to manipulate that to fight Liam's going to be saving a little bit of time on each BBH re-entry Punky goes for like a long jump and a dive rollout and ground pound I'm just gonna long jump and jump dive here to just kill him on the slide. Oh, he actually missed it. I guess it's good that I point that out anyway because it is a small optimization, but since you do it like five times, you might be able to save like a second or so. Shoutouts to Bida for wearing some hot GSA merch. That actually all, looks pretty good. All that GSA merch, explanation point merch in chat. <laughs> Make sure to check that out. Here we go. All right, two stars left for Punk A. Liam, maybe, I don't know, like 10 seconds behind. So keeping it pretty close in BBH. I think Punk A is put a little bit more time into practicing it. But Liam King Swing, he's got it where it counts. And he's also been on some really good like bbh 100 coins but hasn't gotten like a sick gold yet big boot on the balcony this nice be long jump kill this long this that star can be difficult just simply because you're not seeing where mario is at as you're finishing this up it's almost you're almost blind to yeah. a degree and you're, ha and you're dealing with the angle of that roof, which, you know, unless you're kicking up the roof, Mario is going to be sliding down it no matter what. And Liam with that kind of, you know, x cam kind of practice and looking at those lag reductions, he saved a little bit of time on that star. You might not notice, but when he goes to kill the boo, both he and Punky go into lag two cam, which reduces lag going up the roof of the house. When you ground pound, you want to go back to Mario Cam. And Liam did that as well, but also ground pounding a bit more often. So just showing that even though he's a much newer to the game, he's kind of been very much on top of what's new and what's good in 2019. Whereas Punk I think he's just so good at some of the stuff he's done for years. Well, Fluffy with the tier 2 subscription, 13 months. Into that subscription, really appreciate it. A little subscription hype. Well, into Triple D now. This is probably the star you really want to hold your breath for. Not a metaphor or 
you know, a double meaning because you're underwater, but literally because it's one of the hardest things to do in the game under well, pressure. Well, this second section, you know, it, we, when we, the, that whole tier list thing came out, we were there was a huge discussion where DDD deserved to be on the tier list, you know, whether you were one of the people who put it up higher because you thought it was interesting and fun, or if you were really against it because all it was was two small sections connected by a pipe. Um, but this second section for DDD 100, uh, you know, the, the wall kicks that are involved are just insane. Um, and you know, how precise you need to be. And if you miss it, you know, you're falling in the water. We all know how water is in SM64. Yeah. It's just so slow. Uh, but Liam making up a little bit of time off Punke just based off point grabs. Punke having a little bit of difficulty. Yeah, he missed two of them. You can only miss one. He missed one of the second vertical row. And then when you go through the rings, it's hard to do those optimally. He missed one there. Liam Kings did his rings without missing any, so you could skip one of that. But Punky actually had to go back up for the rings. So Liam pretty much able to tie it up here. And we're actually seeing coming onto the sub. This is a big gamer moment for both of these guys. Let's see if they can get the sub. All right, I think they're both going to go for some pretty good strats here. Well, this is where you pull the big gamer brain, like you were saying. These wall well, kicks needs to right do more here. Wall Oh my god, Liam taking the lead here with those extra wall kicks from Punk K coming around to the front sub. He's got it now. This triple jump dive is hard. Liam not even bothering to set it up, going right for it and getting it. And Punk K right on his tail now. Liam also is going to do a long jump wall kick here. I think Punk K does it well. Yep. That's new as well to save some time. This could end up with a sink if, if, if these guys aren't careful. I mean, there's plenty of water to fill that sink as well. Like, we're in the Dire Dire oh, yeah. Dogs. <laughs> and there we go. Wow. Fully synced. DDD 100 going great for both of them. Well, but Punky 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 struggling a little bit early on, but making up that time in the end. Well, Punky had that front sub just a little bit nicer than Liam, so he was able to make up a little time and actually gain the lead just before they grabbed uh, that they that they went for that triple jump obviously liam going for the insta triple jump uh holding on to the lead but we have synced up chests now oh but punk K missing the third chest is gonna have to come back around and grab it gonna lose about four seconds just based off that had to ruin it That's a tough one, you know. We talk about swimming, and but those chests can be so finicky. Um, and speaking of finicky, we have also got the, the manta rings here in a minute. Yeah, manta is pretty tough. If you miss any, if, or if you miss any rings, and it's pretty hard to recover from because the next ones can just decide not to work for you it just seems like the game decides whether or not to grant you passage or you lose 30 seconds but i think both these guys are pretty good at it we shouldn't see any mistakes nice front sub two for two yep front sub pretty much free for both these guys now if we were we were in in this game just to finish it up. You know, normally 70 stars would be done, but we are not done. We've got 50 more stars to go. Fire C, all about that cycle. Yeah, Liam and Punky both doing the code arc movement to get an earlier, comfier early cycle. Oh no, not a side flip for Liam. He, he can maybe make it. Not anymore though. Punk definitely looking to stand to gain some time here. I'm gonna have to go for regular early Ellie's and Punk gonna get that lava boost. He's making it up right. Oh no, he didn't. Okay. Maybe I missed something and he wasn't early enough, but I think he was and he just missed the long jump. Yeah, that, that looks like a missed long jump from my end. Um, just wasn't lined up correctly. A little bit cleaner of a fire see on Punky's side. Yeah, I don't know. They were both like, eh. 
Not terrible, though. Didn't have any meltdowns. You know, like, if you have butter or chocolate in piracy, it's probably melted down by the time you get to the first bread, but Mario made of it a little bit tougher stuff. Leaving with the three-quarter spin grab. And this is still so close. We've got about 40 minutes left of this race. Still, I mean, I don't think they've been separated by more than 15, 20 seconds this whole time. This has been insane. Like, I can't even believe, first of all, that they've both been playing this well. Even they've had some big mistakes. They haven't really been able to... No one's like completely thrown it away. It's still so close. Yeah, just a little bit of spaghetti. Just enough to, you know, put it on your sandwich, make a nice little meatball spaghetti sandwich. But not enough for like a dinner, per se. I, I, I can get behind that. But when you talk about those Manta rings, you know, they can be kind of weird, but neither guy having any problems with them at all. Heading back over into this second section. Yeah, this is kind of the calmer part of Diary Diary Docks. The 100 coin is definitely where all of the marbles go down. That doesn't even make sense. I don't even know what I thought in my head well, that it would make sense. But this is kind of the slower part. Just getting ready for upstairs. And it is looking to be like a 104 upstairs, which is like definitely 140 pace. So considering this is like a relay and a no reset attempt, that is pretty sick. I like Mario. One more star, and it's going to be possibly the least interesting in DDD. It's like the CCM snowman's head. All right. So I think our swimming ASMR is over. And then we're going to get up to the wet dry world in THI before the final switch of the run where we're going to have Cheese and Para take over to bring it home. Yeah, pretty close to that last trade off. But as you see Liam heading into Fire Seed, two head upstairs, Punkay falling closely behind. You know, as we get deeper into this run, you know, heading towards Tippy, obviously, uh, Rainbow Ride, TTC, and of course, you've got Winged Mario over the rainbow. You've got to grab all of those stars. Um, the level of difficulty increases as you go up, obviously, from here. Yeah, for sure. Cheese, you know, showing his support for that 104 uptime for both runners. And they're still like nowhere near like they're they're six seven seconds apart and we're in hour and five minutes in so once again this is insane i'm so happy it's gone like this but on the same page like it's not very likely a relay race comes this close and this is actually a tough star though downtown is definitely something where you lose a little bit of time just by the ending and maybe just do some bad swimming. So Liam getting that long jump over and very clean. Actually not getting a ground pound. Punk came missing that side flip. Camera's a bit wonky here. So we'll see if he can get the good ending. Uh, ledge grab. So yeah, a couple seconds lost for both. Yeah, uh, Punk came also missing the uh, vanish cap. Liam showing off this new movement, this well, new-ish movement for uh, this kind of elevator star. You know, you, you instead of ground pounding onto the block as you head down, 
you kick it beforehand. Yeah, we've seen Saf still do that on the qualifiers. Liam as well, picking that strat up. A lot of the time, it's just kind of one person does it. Like, I think Draws did it first, and then other people are like, yeah, I don't know. I think this could work. And then just put a little bit of work in and get get the time save, even though it's not much for this one. It's still pretty cool. Triple jump wall kick again for Liam Kings. Good. Hunke, also good. It's very difficult, by the way, the triple jump wall kick there. All right, a bit of a bonk there for Liam. Coming to those secrets. Punke is actually maybe a frame in to the good here. Walking off the box. This star is super cool to watch. And Liam missing that wall kick there. I'm trying to go too fast. He knows what's at stake. Punke's got it where it counts, but Liam is definitely not wanting to let him get in this lead. Oh, Punke now. Oh, Punke missing that long Whoa. jump. Wow, that is critical right there. You know, he, ha he had, had the lead and completely miffed that long jump. Really unfortunate to see. Good backup, you know, uh, good backup management. But losing the lead once again. Liam taking care of 100s now. Wet dry world. Yeah, that was huge. So Punke, you know, he's still pretty close behind, but he had, you know, he had the claw for a few seconds of a lead, but he just kind of lost it all right again, like right as soon as he got it. All right, so everyone, you know, we're getting really into the thick of it. If you want to predict the winning team and the final time and you get it right somehow, I'll give you a sub. So get your predictions in. You can, I'll give it to you if you miss by like two seconds either way. So like the five second window pretty much. All right, Liam coming to the town. This is a pretty hot part of the, the run and for like for good reason. A lot of people really love this area. It's just such fun movement. Nice side flip into that double jump ground pound for Liam Kings. And the sending is pretty cool. You'll actually go over the corner to initiate uh, an instant double jump because you kind of cancel your falling. Because if you fall off a ledge and jump, you'll get a double jump and you just brush right off a ledge there so you don't even waste any time at all. So good ending there. Okay, can he match it? That was a pretty hot downtown. All right, I'm not, I got to go through so many messages here. I'm trying to save some of them for you. <laughs> I'm just gonna like control F like in the, in the VOD once this is over, see if anyone got it. Fair way of doing it. Okay, getting this 100 and reds. Liam avoiding any amps, just taking that little secret around. And that's it for Wet Dry World. One last stage for Liam Kings and Punke. And well, then and that is going to be it for them. Well, and it's THI, uh, which this stage, you know. Uh, it sucks. Either you love it or you hate it. Um, I think for the most part, people just hate this stage just because of the way that it's kind of mismanaged in this weird way. Uh, good secrets there from Liam to start. Punke having to back it up, though. Not having a great start. Missing the second secret. Brief meow. -y. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. All right, Liam Kings with a ledge go there. Punk going go ahead and really save on these secrets with a lot of kicks. We're gonna lose a little bit of time here for both of them, but probably about the same relative to each other. As long as he doesn't ledge go here and he's good. Liam going to be taking care of this, this you know, the toughy toughy one is this 
100 coins. Yeah, this is probably the most RNG heavy of the stars in the run. And you gotta be super careful because if you get, if you hit those Goombas without ground pounding them, you're, you're losing four coins. Um, the only way that you get a blue coin is if you ground pound them. All right, nice double kill on the beach. Getting that coin before it went in the water. Pretty good stuff here. And Liam is actually gonna be able to skip or can successfully convert that pull skip route. Punky is gonna need every coin as well here. Missing the long jump, going for a swim. That's not gonna do him any favors. Black 2 gonna be raining hail like it's D Day or something out here. Okay, never mind. Gotta get this fly guy though. Chasing him up the beach. So evasive is the fly guy here. Gonna have to kill the Koopa and go for a shell attack, bringing out the heavy artillery. Yeah, that's a tough one. Especially with the movement that the fly guy has, it's difficult to really just nail him down. But Liam taking care of it pretty easily. Punke able to mitigate a disaster. Kevin Crunch coming in with 14 viewers and the host. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, I didn't even get to talk about the cave, but if you die in the cave, you probably lose more time there than any other death in the run because it's like two minutes into the star and then you kind of have to do the whole thing over again. Both of them getting through it though. And we have a wiggle clip here, Liam going through here. You actually want to be farther to the right than for the top of the island mountain clip because then you don't pop out of the water and you can just swim in the floating zone. They're always talking about carrying noobs. Alright, good hits from Liam Kings. That mini boss isn't difficult, but you can lose plenty of time there because of just the spacing of the hits. Clean wriggle clip from Punke. So Liam got out of there as soon as Punke entered. So I don't know, maybe like 20 seconds of a lead. As Punke is finishing up this Wiggler fight, Liam gonna be scaling this mountain, going for that mountain clip one more time. Really nice execution there. Only saving about half a second over going around, but you know, movement saves minutes and that's some good movement. Two stars left for Liam Kings, both of them pretty easy. Gonna kind of coast this one out. Liam doing so well in this relay. Some pog champs out for Liam Kings. Going up out here. Thank him for participating and putting on quite a nice performance here. Putting the team, I would say still on 140 pace. Because I don't know what the um, upstairs has been so far. Like a couple minor mistakes, but I'd say like still definitely 140 on the cards. Well, so far, Liam's put the team on the back. If you, if you want to put it that way, you know, just really showing up. Um, only a couple of minor mistakes. Uh, but holding on to this lead as he goes to hand it off to Cheese. All right. Last star for Liam here. The Cooper race. Punke getting that Piranha star out of the way. But then he'll be on star number 88, which will be his last. So as Liam finishes up this and Para as uh, Punke as well, this will be the last star for both of them. And cheese. Cheese and Para will be finishing this up. This would be a really juicy showdown in Tippy because Pear and Cheese definitely both like want to beat each other. And at the same time, they're both like really good in Tippy. Pear and more of like a, a Rainbow Ride specialist as well with those glitchy wall kicks and all that. Cheese more of just a really consistent player in the end game as well. But we'll probably see some nutty cloud stage strats. They both like to fly over the second red, which is super risky for races as well. 
All right, Chalice to Punke. Nice run from him. Para's got a little bit of catching up to do, but still, the team is in good stead here. And Punke showing off some of that mid-game consistency. Yeah, that breezeless. Really beautiful. Para, where is he going? <laughs> where is he going? Where are you going? Where is he going? Would okay, you so like the map? <laughs> he's, he, instead of taking it down, he's just going to head straight back downstairs. Uh, going to be heading back up into TTM. Giving Cheese a significant lead now here into the end. We saw caught up here like carrying noobs. I wonder who the noob is. <laughs> wow. But whatever. What a way to... He didn't say that, but like he said, he just quoted Para. What a way to finish, start the end of this amazing relay race that we've seen so far. Cheese doing a really, really nice job here in TTM as we saw that happen. Para with the breezeless as well, though. Nice. You know, maybe Team Cyclops is an elaborate metaphor, you know, you have to have full focus. So if you have like two eyes, you know, maybe you can like try to multitask. I know that's not how it works, but full focus on Breezeless. No doubt in his mind that he'd get it. All right, ball kicks or log ball kicks going all right for Cheese here. He's got to do the monkey glitch here. Grabbing the monkey can be kind of tough. He's got it though. Dusty Raw might have made it a bit tougher, but he still got the timing. Insta clip for Para. All right, good monkey glitch for Cheese. There is one star behind because he did breeze this first. So he's going to go do monkey glitch now. Well, actually, no, I think she said breeze as well. So, like, I forget that. She's making his way over to this mushroom. Just a little funny box jump. His way up there, Para. Nice job scaling the mountain, grabbing old chimp. Splice. Just kidding. Relay splice. You won't catch me sleeping. Cheese taking. <laughs> She's gonna take care of his hundreds. Nice rollout. Really nice rollouts. You know, that's sketchy. You know, if you don't get that correctly, it's really... Yeah, he may do whatever prob with that red coin maze. Shoutouts to D-whatever. Punky, nice box jump. She's gonna be going into the slide. This is probably the hardest slide because the bends are a bit tighter and also like you kind of rock back and forth when you just want to go collect a few coins so you got to get a feel for it and the c up slide there is kind of when you press c up when you go on the side for the first time lets you gain a little bit more speed on that large like the really long straight slope Para looking pretty spicy here. Going for that alternate movement with the double jump wall kick in the maze. It's actually a bit faster. But this is also going to skip a red coin, so he won't have a star spawn. He's going to do it at the end once he gets out of the maze. He's going to grab his... He's going to grab the last red coin to be the 100th coin, where he's going to kill the ball bomb. Well, Para, uh, a little interesting there. You know, we saw Cheese on Cheese's end. Really nice lag reduction as he was taken care of. Um, oh, this is bad. He's got a belly slide. He's got to get out of this um, right now. He can clip over a ledge and get back into a butt slide, but he's got to, like... Actually, I think he's fine. He doesn't need to jump. He just falls off here. All right, we're good. False alarm, but that could have been really scary. You can also, if you don't cancel your C up slide soon enough, you'll fly right through the wall and die, which would have been way worse. So, I think it's fine. I don't know. He might even meant to do that. I'll have to ask him. Well, 
into SL. She's taking care of the snowman's head. Really nice movement there. Tough because the, the, the wall kicks that you have to do can be kind of kind of weird. If you take a fall, the backup for it is is, is just as difficult. All right, Igloo here. Pretty tough star for how short it is. Oh, jeez. Just diving right past that star. He it looks like he was just beneath it into the right. Um, so obviously, Mari not able to grab it from that angle. Para taking care of Snowman's head. Right there. Missing that dive onto the snow. Gonna lose a bit of time on this star. Not too bad. But Para, you know, maybe he can catch up a little bit. All right, not the cleanest igloo from Para either, but he's at least gonna get the star. Now, also I want to point out, Para does a very unique hundred coin. It's not much faster, like half a second, but it looks really, really cool. When he gets to the, when he gets out of the igloo, he's gonna do an alternate movement where he's gonna do some slides on these big slopes cheeses around right now, and that's gonna send him right to the snowman or like. Right to the box here where he's gonna be getting the star. He's gonna get right to the other box to get the show. Alright, cheese on 100 coin. This is a big RNG fest, even more so than THI, which is why a lot of people really don't like the star. But you gotta do it anyway, and you have to make the best of what you get. She's missing the punch going into the water. It's very cold. You actually will lose health more quickly in the water. Well, you lose health whether you're underwater or not, but yeah. It'll get drained pretty quick. Para, let's go. Getting that point from the spin drift here. And going backwards to go up the slide. It's pretty hot. Yeah, the, these money bag coins are just so difficult. RNG seems to be a little bit more aggressive with those in particular. All right, she's finishing up at 100 coin and went pretty well, I think. We'll see how Para handles this movement here. Oh yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go. That was sick. I love that route a whole lot. I think it's just so cool that he wants to go for it. Really nice RNG on Paris side. Easily guiding him straight towards that. Those two, that one red. This is the last star before Tippy for cheese. It's just gonna be killing the bully. One of the easiest ones. And then we're, then we're going to go up to Cloud Stage, and I don't know if he's going to try for the BLJ, fondly um, also known as Wilco Clip. Here we go. I'm, I know Para will do it, but it's a possible difference of time, or possible time save for Para if he gets it first try and choose us and go for it. Oh, he's going oh, for he's it. Doing it! Oh, wow, that was perfect. Wow. Really, really nice Wilco clip. Shout out to somehow, man, the myth, the legend Wilco. Somehow in 16, people lose runs all the time, and the 120, it's like free. All right, nice fight over the second coin there, cheese. No fear. If you land there, you probably fall off, and you go all the way outside to the castle courtyard. So let me say, you don't want to, you don't want to fall there. Well, the the next difficult part is going to be right here. This cannon shot, you know, you, you, there's a, there's a coin 
near some poles. You want to avoid gr getting a pole grab. This will be on the next cannon shot. If he wants to go for the direct shot into the coin, or if he wants to land on top of the cloud. Para insane Wilco clip! What is going on? I don't understand. I'm missing the castle movement, but still. I'm so, like, blown away. Blown away. Okay, Para gonna go fly over the coin, getting it as well. Alright, good start for Cheese. Para gonna do the last maybe 30 seconds of this one. So right now Cheese has a big enough lead, he just needs to focus on consistency. But at the same time, you can never guarantee anything in Tippy. Well, it's TTC and Rainbow Ride. Well, right there. Missing the two wall kicks. Wall kicks there for the start of hundreds here in TTC. Yeah, he got a safety red as well to make sure he didn't have to worry about RNG later on. midsection for this 100s moving close now into this scary section 70 80 90 coins you didn't even need to get those it's kind of crazy but the point of it is to not have to worry about this box right here for 90 coins so he's gonna have to get every single one and he's missed one okay it's all good all right good presence of mind there for cheese para not gonna take that safety red he doesn't need it Hoping that RNG is on his side. Cheese with the wall kicks up to thwomping the womp. We don't actually thwomp the womp. You stomp the thwomp? Or stomp the thwomp, whatever. Para into this critical section now as well. Big that thing. was so scary. Yeah. Just right on the edge of that. Oh, not avoiding! The invis wall there. I love invisible walls too. Almost as much as I love Benny. They just make my day. Alright, I just want to talk about like when Para got that the 70 box of coins. Like the thought process in his mind was complete confidence and like to take risks whether they pay off or not because that movement nearly killed him. But like he was able to just barely get the dead dive roll out and not die i can't i can't even believe it happened it was just so bold just you know shout outs to him but like even if it wasn't the right decision to do he still made it work oh, oh no. no he's falling off can you save it he's dead yeah so para unfortunately taking a death here in ttc gonna be succeeding time here with cheese cheese who is carefully and methodically taking care of these stars yeah he's probably got about a minute to work with in terms of the lead right now so it's really the, the ball is in his court although that's kind of a cliche but nice lead jab skip for para doing that double jump instead of a side tip is a lot harder and the first deep off that wall Actually, to note, that was our first death in this whole run. Yeah, you're right. So that, I mean, that's ju that's just telling you how good these guys are. That in this relay race, there has that's been the first death in an hour and a half of running. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. But geez, he's got a two-star lead, and Red Coins is the last star before Rainbow Ride. You know, where teams go to die. Well, and let's talk about Rainbow Ride for a moment. You know, will we see no. Carpetless? No. We... No. <laughs> no! <laughs> the Carpetless meme, con meme continues. I hate you! <laughs> I, I forget. I, freaking episode 3 of Star Wars.
Anyway, enough for that bad movie. Let's get into a good stage. All right, so Rainbow Ride 100 is pretty tough. Fly guy not having anything to do with that one. Yeah, that was close to a death there on Cheese's side, just narrowly getting that ledge grab. Right, killing that lack two, not getting those coins though. He's got to do another loop around. Ooh, this is pretty tough. Lots of circles around these platforms. Well, the, the platform is spinning and, you know, the RNG of the coins can be difficult yeah, just hard. to manage that. Para taking care of TTC, going to be heading over, talking to Toad, and then heading into Rainbow Ride. Yeah, those, are well. really, those are really clean reds from Cheese. Para here able to finish up TikTok Clock, but he's pretty far behind. He's going to need a big mistake from Cheese to get back into this one. On the carpet now. It's a pretty easy going from here. Unless you like do something really stupid. They're missing one point from the fly guy, but it's still pretty decent to actually get something from him, unlike cheese. Alright, coming up here. Now this is a small time save here to get the coins from the lack two. But cheese had pretty good red coins as well. See so look at all those coins he got. They, that was like great RNG as well. Para doing what he can. Make up some time, you know. She's needing to stall, but missing that one red. Gonna back it up with that right at the very bottom. Nothing too, too terrible. Punching straight yeah, through lost. the pink bomb on. Okay, so not perfect. He's gotta figure out this camera if he's good. Oh no, he's not good at all! Para falling all the way down! Bob, I'm running him into the corner! Hysteria! On the Team Cyclops corner of the ring. Alright, he's finally made it on the carpet, but that was a pretty big time loss. Hysteria was a weird word choice, I don't know what I was going for. I thought you were talking about Mew just for a moment. The band. I'm trying to think because I've listened to them, but I don't remember what song. Hysteria. They have a song called Hysteria. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but she's taking care of those 100s and that very top of Rainbow Ride Star, top of the house. Yeah. Lack two balance for cheese. He's kind of doing the poverty glitchy wall kick, where it's like seems pretty consistent for him, but it's faster than the regular method. Here we go. All right, good cruiser. Hera is still chilling on the carpet. It can't. He can't do anything to speed it up. So knowing he's in, he's pretty far behind right now. Can't be too fun for him. She's taken care of. Oh no, not taken care of. Black to bounce a second time. Gonna have to go for it a third time. Gonna be going for reds instead, but getting some mistakes from here. the bottom as well. You can't even get around them. Alright. Alright, now taking care of reds. And the dive on the slope. That, that that slope is just so finicky. It's weird, you know. Uh, you're like a pixel off, and you don't get the backslide. Right, cheese with three stars left to go on Rainbow Ride. He had a pretty bad star there, but he hasn't died yet. And if you can get this, I can do about Paramus and Glitchy Walkie. That's another death for him. 
Alright, she's gonna have to go for the cannon here this time. A bit of a longer lack to bounce star. But able to grab the pull. Nice. And not going the best. I wasn't able to get that wall kick. That's scary. Off the pull. But able to take care of it. Para following behind doing the same star. Um, I'm a little disappointed, I guess, Psionic, but, you know, I, I would never get great reds in a run anyway. I want to see more people try to do the jump kick ending, though. Nice triangles for cheese. A really fast long jump out of the cage for the eagle nest. Aaron missing those wall kicks as well. Both him and Cheese have struggled a little bit on lack two bounds and another miss. I think he's trying to go too fast right now, but it's not really working out. Yeah, and he's this is kind of just being a tilt factor. He's just gotta climb to the top of this pole, you know, not try to rush it too much. This is on pace to be like a 140 20, which would be insane. I think that's right. Like if he has the perfect sky. Yeah, well, she's heading into bits. You know, the very end of this, and he, you know, he takes care of these reds very, very nicely. You know, he, he's very consistent with it. She's not gonna get that past the cycle. Oh, he was. That was close. <laughs> No, dude, he, he like he was right on the edge of that. Oh, what the elevator did not cooperate with him there. Weird. It looks like he got a ledge grab and just you know as the platform turns, obviously it has a leg on that platform. So flipping Mario. This smooth flame skip for cheese. Coming on to the last half of the star. See what he's got here. Doing some jump kicks over here to stall his momentum a little bit. Some fast speed kicks here. This pull grab's tough. You gotta grab it from the bottom, which means you have to press B really fast to grab it. If you don't grab it on the first frame when you like attempt to time it. He's got it. Alright, he is definitely on 140 pace still, avoiding that Goomba. Not to jinx it, but this is looking like a really sick run from Team Congo. Para getting his 119th star, gonna be entering Sky as Cheese quite possibly wraps up this run and the W. Yeah, just three throws away. Para heading into bits as well. One for one so far. Cheese, two for two. And the third throw. Right on the money. You would never guess he missed a Bowser throw in his life. What a legend. A 140 in the relay. Probably as good of like a, a relay time as there ever like could be. I can't think of anything that's beaten that by a mile. 140-29 on Team Congo's side. Taking the dub. Para going to be finishing like, this up. <laughs> Like, that's just incredibly good. I don't know what happened this run, but, like, I noticed uh, several mistakes even, but just the overall level of gameplay and consistency star to star was really, really good. Well, like, a one or like, that would that would put him in, like, that would be, like, a, that's better than the seventh place time on the leaderboard. Both Liam and Cheese showed up. Uh, Liam in a big way, obviously, through that midsection, taking on Punk A, giving the opportunity to hold on to the lead as they uh, moved into that end section past THI. But Para and Punke showing up as well, looking like they'll get a very, very low 142. 
Now I gotta go check if anyone actually predicted the right time. Hopefully we can get a six for six. Pair out one for one so far. Two for two. And oh, unfortunately, missing that third and final throw, so we will not get a six for six. Yeah, it's going to be a 142 here for Team Cyclops. But still, just have like that be the losing time is really impressive. All right. Thank you, first of all, for all of you watching here. I hope you had a great time. We're going to get some interviews from these legendary 120 runners. Yeah. Jeez. Para, what's up? I guess we'll go ahead and... I'm sorry with cheese since you did the second and fourth segments you know the last segment and tibby went really well uh how did you feel closing that one out uh good i had a i had a good tippy i had a good second segment overall so i was happy about that one because i'm usually not that good at closing off i don't think but liam <laughs> liam i mean liam pretty i think carried more than i did um my first segment wasn't great and i made that big mistake in hmc which I think if I didn't, it might have actually been a 139, which would have been the sickest thing ever. Now, uh, yeah. I want to I wanna ask about that second section in particular. So if Cheese and Paro, if you want to talk, you know, about it for a moment. it was, I mean, it was synced up for like a good solid 10 minutes yeah. through that, that second section. Oh, you mean the uh, basement section? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we both played like really bad in basement. Yeah, basement was not great, but uh, Spanish Cap and CCM were okay, and I yeah, I think after that, it was DDD was insane. That was that sync and DDD was back and forth, and then after DDD was when started when things started changing. DDD was hype, uh, like for for a section that's you know it's not so hype. Low, I th I thought it was pretty pretty hype. So, uh, you know, seeing you guys kind of trade it back and forth, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, so I think even even if I had a good, like, finish, I probably still wouldn't have won. Cheese made, like, fairly minimal mistakes. And we were, like, we were pretty far behind, like, even without the, uh, the whole THI re-entry. <laughs> well, what happened there exactly, <laughs> if you don't mind? Oh, uh, I just, like... I set up the camera to re-enter because it was like just muscle memory, and yeah, I don't know. I held down and long jumped. <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, like even without that, I probably wouldn't have won any either way. So, well, Liam and Punke, you know, starting off this race, uh, kind of t talk, walk us through like how it was starting this off, knowing that it was a relay race and that you had to kind of set the tone. Um, <laughs> I'm always like, I always get super nervous for these races, especially WAMPs, because it's like, you can't reset, obviously, so you don't really want to like, fail Owlis or Canlis or 100 coin or something, but, um, I mean, my beginning was pretty good, except for like, B.O.B., I think it was a mid-23, which is pretty good for no BLJ, I got. Yeah, that's pretty good. And Punkay? Mm, I, I I have this whole relay. Uh, my ghost hunt was really sick, and that was about it. Like my overall gameplay was like pretty mediocre. Like lots of a uh, lots of like really silly things happening. And I guess I guess my first segment was like okay. I don't remember what I got. It was like a high twenty three something. And I don't know. Just. Just some really silly things happen, like in THI, like what happened there, but C THI secrets, I mean, what happened there is I didn't think I was grabbing the first secret, so I like turned around, but I actually got it, and what THI 100 coin is just, I did like the uh, faster route, which I'm not too used to, I screwed at the beginning, but the major screw up I did was when I just like, didn't long jump after I killed the three Goombas next to the pole. I kind of had like a meltdown trying to kill the fly guy. 
I don't know. I my gameplay was decent. At least I didn't lose like twenty plus seconds in DDD one hundred. I guess. Yeah, that, that DDD one hundred was really high from both. Yeah. Is it just me or did Liam play like ridiculously well in this relay? Yeah, yeah Liam, I think Liam played the best out of all of us. Yeah, he definitely did. I mean, like, the segments I had compared to, like, Basement and Tippy are not, they're, like, a lot easier, so it makes a little bit of sense, but just, ne like, no huge mistakes, I guess. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was really sick. Yeah, I, my main problem is just, I, could, I just kept on doing these really silly things that kind of shouldn't happen, but oh well. Well, any final comments from any of, any of you guys before we head on out of here? Uh, uh, I love Vinny. Rematch at some point. Thank yeah, dude. Yeah, I think so, a rematch. Rematch should be cool. Yeah, so, you know, Cheese said he's probably going to do some non-stop 120, or the other three of you probably still going to be on that 120 grind? What do you think? Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, that'll be it for us. GG's. Uh, it's Team Congo, but of course, thank you all you guys for showing up. That was an awesome race to watch, an awesome race for uh, us to commentate. Uh, make sure to check out Xbox Point schedule to see the full schedule of everything that GSA has going on Xbox Point bracket. See where all your favorite runners are at. Uh, Xbox Point YouTube or Xbox Point YT for the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe all reruns. This race in also will be on there. Uh, any clips that you might want to see, or if you just missed a race or you want to rewatch a race, it's all there. Uh, but that'll be it for us. Padronis, it's been a pleasure commentating with you, my man. Yeah, this was oh, a yeah, fantastic that... race to watch. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, oh, Cheese. Go ahead, sorry. All right, well, I was having a whole lot of fun today. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did, and make sure that you are sticking around for the league starting this week. There's plenty more where that came from. All right. Well, later we got some Paper Mario coming up soon. So if you're interested in that, make sure to stick around. Peace. We got the season grand finals. Two. Season 2 tomorrow we're starting. We do indeed. It's going to be Mario Odyssey tomorrow. Thursday, it's going to be Mario 64 and Celeste. Friday, more SM64. Saturday and Sunday, Mario Maker 2. So be there.